Hello everybody, my name's Mon PJC and welcome to my Minecraft server guide. I'm here to show you all about Minecraft and how to get it loaded onto a server so that you can play it with other friends and people. So what is the essence and the purpose of the videos we're going to be doing here? As you can see, we haven't started a typical uh, tutorial video on somebody's desktop. No, nope. we've started in Minecraft and that's where I'm going to be showing you where most of these things are happening. What we're going to be doing is guiding you as a player from your original single player world and taking you all the way through from this computer in the background where we're running Minecraft and taking it over to running it on something like this. It may be a local server or it might be if you look very carefully in the distance there a server that's quite some distance away or even up in the clouds. So you could be asking yourself why do this at all? Why do we want to run Minecraft on a server? Well, I've heard a number of people over the years talk about running their own server or wanting to be part of another community server. So many times I've been sitting there watching somebody's YouTube stream and them going, oh, please, uh, can I join your server? Please, can I join this um, big community or that big community? And very often the YouTuber or the Twitch streamer is saying, Look, I'm really sorry, but it's a closed community and you can't join. And you need to maybe think about going away and doing your own. So that's the first reason we're doing these videos, is to show you how you could go away and build your own community of friends playing on a server. And maybe, who knows, you could be the next big Twitch, YouTube, Mixer or whatever uh, streaming team of players out there in the world. The other thing as well, it's, which really is why I started out doing a Minecraft server, is it's all very good. Building your world, running around, and enjoying yourself. You build fantastic buildings and different objects around, and you'll see many of these from the, wor from the worlds that I've built. But just like Piggy back here, you could end up being all alone. And there's no one else to show. Sure, you might be posting your videos on uh, YouTube or wherever, or posting pictures on Instagram and Twitter to show your friends and try and get some feedback from somebody else and show people this cool stuff you've been making. But it's nothing like being able to get your friends to come around and join in and play on the game with you and be in the same world. It could be that you want to build a server which is for just you and your friends. It might be that you want to build a server which again is going to be like a big Twitch or a big massive community. Or it could be that you're aiming for something like Hypixel where you want to be bringing in revenue and making a massive server with hundreds of thousands of players taking part all the time. Whatever that is, you're going to have to start right here with Minecraft with the very basic tools and stuff. So if you're still watching, it's a very good chance that you're really interested to know how to go about doing this. And that's why I'm here. I'm here to show you how to do all of this. And we're going to start by working on our single player world and taking it all the way through to a community. And these videos will show you all these steps. Even I don't know exactly what's going to be happening in these videos because we're going to be seeing what happens and the community and the players that come on are going to change and make the, make the server that we play different. What I am going to be doing, you, doing, however, is taking you step by step through each video, showing you the details, trying not to make it boring and, and dull and uninteresting so that you've got something you can work with. In the descriptions below, I will be supplying loads of links. I'll be talking about all the different apps that we use, any tools, etc. I'll even be putting links up in the uh, top little cards or at the end screens to other videos and other people out there in the world on the community that are doing things like this as well. So you haven't just got my word for it, you've got other people doing that as well. So I've come around the back here to the back of our computer here in our creative Minecraft world to actually give you an example of 
what Minecraft is and what's actually going on. So in the back of our computer here, we've got a, a whole mixture of weird looking bits and pieces and you might actually feel completely lost and bemused looking at this like you would do looking inside your own computer as to actually what's going on inside there. There's all this like complicated redstone stuff and weird looking bits and pieces laying around and discs and big lumpy things that are like supposed to be really clever and intelligent. And it's really difficult to sometimes work out which bit is actually what. Now what's actually going on inside your computer, this is obviously not anything like a real computer, but just to give you an idea, is there are lots and lots of these little applications. These are programs that are running on your computer. And every one of them has a different function. It might be running Twitter. It might be your operating system. It might be playing some music. It might be recording a TV program for you. It might even be doing a Skype call with somebody else. However, all of these little applications do different things. We're not so worried about those. Actually, what we're really interested in is this one over here. Here, you can see we've got Minecraft running inside this little application down here. And in most instances, we will be talking about Minecraft Java because that's the, that's the tool that we're going to be using to create our servers with. Minecraft runs inside this application called Java. So our little world exists inside this little tiny bubble, surrounded by Minecraft itself and the world that makes it the interactive world that we see and play and love. However, this, this coating around the outside is Java and is what we refer to sometimes as the server, or is the server side of Minecraft that we're interested in. This Java application runs there all the time, updating the environment, the world, and doing things like moving the pig around that we saw outside. Now to turn this into a server for everyone to play on, we need to be able to create some connectivity. So we need to be able to like connect the redstone up out the back here to the wider world and out into the clouds and all the other computers and people out there so that they can join in. And with no connection, there's nothing there to do other than to play the game by yourself. Now, most of the world that exists in here is not just running an application all the time, but also exists on your disk drive in your computer. The disk drive is a mass storage device, a bit like a filing cabinet that stores all your files. Now, if you're not familiar with files and complex commands and different things that you're expecting to see in videos that scare you off, then don't worry. We'll be trying to keep that as simple as possible and making all the instructions copyable and show you how to get this up into the cloud, into the world somewhere else. But the first thing we need to do is create our own version of Minecraft, and that is to build our own world, our own world in Minecraft. And that all starts with seeds. Now, when it comes to seeds, most of us are used to these, like little green things that I've got here in my hand and um, like getting chickens following you around all over the place. But that's not what I'm actually gonna be talking about here. The seed for your Minecraft is what creates your world. The world that you exist in and the one that surrounds you. It contains the information that uh, creates the different biomes, where you'll find different villages, etc., all around you. And you can actually find out an awful lot about your seed and the information that's going to be in your world before you even open Minecraft for the first time. Behind me on the floor here is a giant map of my world seed that I use. And I'm just going to give you a little tour of it and show you what's on here. So in just a few minutes, I'm going to be showing you how we created this map and how we created this seed. But on the screen right now, you can see my numeric seed number. This is my world number that I use and play in. And you can see I have a world type of default, which is the normal everyday world that we see. 
So this massive long number is what has created this world around me, which stretches out far beyond these four sides that we see here. Now, when we spawn in the world, we spawn around zero, zero. You can see the coordinates are written on these different blocks or squares here. In the middle here, tucked behind this little villager's head, is the uh, spawn point, the home position, the world spawn point of where we start. Now, if I just hop up a little bit and zoom out a bit, you can see the world around us. So you can see there's large lakes, we've got ice spikes, we've got ice, We've got different types of terrain. We've got sand. We've got an outpost here. Uh, we can see where temples are and even things like witch farms, etc. And you can get an idea because these numbers are all blocks. So this tells you how many blocks away each thing is. For example, if I wanted to go and find myself a jungle temple, it would be lo located over here some 3,000 blocks away from my spawn location. Right over in the corner of this map, you'll see the only area where I'm gonna find a mesa, some 9,000 blocks away. Now, when you decide on your seed, you're gonna to have to decide how you want your world to look and what you want around you. So what I'm gonna do now very quickly is take you into Admitst and show you how to, where to download it from, how to use it, and how to come up with that seed number and populate it into your world so you can play it. So yes, I know we said we would try and stay away from desktops and browsers and odd tools and command lines, but sometimes you just gotta do this stuff if you wanna build a server. You can't do it all from within inside Minecraft after all. So here we are on a website called GitHub which is a website that collects lots of different software packages available for people to download. And Admitst is one of these. Admitst has been around for quite a while now. And as of uh, February, when I'm recording this video, I have just downloaded and started using version 4.4. It's a tool that's free to use and is built by a community of people around it. Uh, the tool is well used by large numbers of people around the world and I've also built other like variations and different pieces with it. But I'm not necessarily too worried about that. The link will be down in the notes, but what we're actually looking for is this link up here. So we're looking for github.com forward slash toolbox for Minecraft slash amist slash releases. And that's what we can go and get. So when we come to this website, we'll come to the code tab and here we can see version 4.4, which was released on the 6th of February, 2020. There are a couple of versions of the code here that you can download. If you're using a Windows program, Windows operating system, then I recommend you download the .exe file, which when you do this, will just save to your computer down here. And then when your virus scan is run or any other bits and pieces, you can go and view your download and you can do things like uh, go and open the file and actually run it. Now from here, you might find that you get warnings about the file, but certainly on Windows, is that this is a file that may contain viruses to things, but I can assure you that at least this version that I've downloaded is completely safe. So there is an actions button over here, and we can say that we can uh, run this program safely by clicking that little down there, and we can say run anyway, and that'll run the program. I tend to copy a mist onto my desktop. As you can see, I've downloaded it here and placed it on my desktop ready to be used. When you open a mist, you'll be presented with a little window that looks like this. Here you can see the different versions of Minecraft that you may have on your computer. Now, as you can see, I've used quite a few. I've got ones going back as far as 1.13. I've got some different types of 1.11, Captive Play, my Steamcraft video series, and other bits and pieces as well, as well as the latest 1.16 snapshot. For this example, what we will be doing is building a world in 1.15. We'll move on to move upgrading servers at a later point to 1.16 and above. 
So once you've come here, what you want to do is select the world generation that you want to have. So here in the latest version, 1.15.2, a mist will connect to that your version of Java and use that to generate the world and the textures and play by the and, and use the rules and play by the rules that Minecraft has used to generate that world. Zooming out a bit further on my desktop, we can now see that the mist is loaded here and we end up with, well, just a blank screen to be honest. So let's have a look at creating some random worlds and seeing what actually comes up. So first of all, we're going to maximize the screen so you can see as much detail as possible. And from the file menu, I'm going to say new from random C. And we're going to choose the default world type. Now what this will do is go away and start creating a world based on a random seed. And here we can see the same things I was showing you similar to the map I had earlier, where our spawn point is located in the middle here, and the scale at the moment is showing about a thousand blocks in each direction. We have a really nice mushroom island over here on the right, and it looks like we'll be spawning right in the middle of a sandy desert area. If I press uh, control R which is the same as going to file sorry like same as going to file new from random C control R and click OK it will now generate yet another random world and what we can do is just by using the mouse scroll wheel we can zoom out to an air a zoom level where we can see the areas around us and the different biomes etc that are about now i'm not going to go into a massive tutorial about how to use a mist when i can find some good videos and links and tutorials for that i'm going to list them at the bottom of this video in the description so you can go away and have a look at that however you can quite happily keep sitting here pressing Control r waiting to see if you actually get the world you want. I'm going to zoom in a little bit, it just helps the uh, generation run a little bit quicker for you here. However, what I'm going to do is show you the seed that I had at the beginning of this video on the floor in our Minecraft creative world. And I can show you that by going to File, New from Seed, and I can paste in my seed number that was shown at the top of the map earlier. And when I click OK, this will now load the map that you saw earlier. So here I am now ready to create my new world and show you what we got from that seed. And I've come into Minecraft, I've loaded the latest version, which is 1.15.2, which is what we're going to build our server on. And we're going to come up here and do the normal things of building or creating our new world. So we're going to call this a new server world, just so that we know what it's for. Now the game mode that we're going to be doing here is we're going to be doing a lot of work on this. It is going to be a survival world, so we will leave it as that to start with. But you can choose to have any type of world you want. I wouldn't recommend hardcore. Creative is a very good opportunity though, but for this case, my examples are going to be for a survival world. We now need to go into the world, more world options. And on here, we can change the way in which the gameplay can actually be carried out. We can choose to have structures on or off. Now, if you're going to be playing a survival world, you're probably going to want this turned on. If you're going to be creating a creative world, you might want some of these turned off. Allow cheats. Allow cheats allows you to do administrative work. That's something we're going to need to be able to do on a server. So we need that turned on. That's important. The world type default was the one that we were using for the generation in a mist. So we'll leave that as it is. And we don't need a bonus uh, chest in here either. Now we now have a space here for the seed for our world generator. Now we got this number from admist. Okay, I know this was the one I was showing you in the map earlier, and you realize I've done this all before. But once you'd found that map in admist, the one that you want to use, 
use the control C to copy that to the clipboard and then paste it in there. I also recommend putting this in a separate text file that you keep somewhere on your computer because if you need the number again and you've lost it or lost your world, the chances of ever finding this seed number again are almost like oh, millions to one. So now we've done all of that, we can go back and we can press create new world. And after a few moments, Minecraft will generate the map and the scenery around us. And here I am in the brand new world. And well, we can't see very much apart from my face, it would seem. Oh, and a tree. But here I am. Now, if we remember looking at the map I was showing you, you will remember that we put ourselves quite next to, uh, quite close to a, a big ocean area here. Now, we do have administrative tool, uh, tools here. So I can type in chat slash game mode creative. There we go. I can double space the clip uh, keyboard and we can actually have a look around at the worlds that's generated with us. With any luck, you should be right here. You should have Minecraft running on your computer there behind you. You should have your world seed in your hand and you should have your world map loaded onto your game and running. You're now in a position you can start experimenting and building things into your world before we get it onto a server. And that's what's coming next. In the next series of videos that I'm going to be putting together for you, I'm going to be showing you how to build some of the elements that we're going to be wanting into the map before we upload it onto a server. After all, who wants to join a server with nothing on it at all? Okay, maybe that is you. But not everyone else does. Some people like to have a few funky gadgets and tools and make your world unique for you. So join me in my next episodes and come and see what we do with this seed. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Please leave a like. Please hit the sub button if you want to follow more. And please put your comments below. What do you think about this approach to making a Minecraft server guide? And tell me your ideas. What sorts of worlds do you want to create in Minecraft that you want to put on the server? Thanks for watching everyone. Until next time. Goodbye.